Hello, my name is Ariel Detweiler. I'm the owner of ACDC Reads, and I'm going to show you today how to wrap some reads. First, I wanted to talk to you about what you need to wrap reads effectively. You're going to need a pair of pliers, a mandrel, some duco cement, the way I do it at least, and we'll talk about materials in a second, and then some string. You can use either kind of string, that's fine. All right, let's talk about some materials that are possibilities for um, wrapping reeds. The two different kinds of string that I just showed you, this is nylon string, silk nylon string. This is cotton string. Obviously, there's a big size difference in the amount that you can get. This is extremely affordable. This is a little more expensive. These guys run at like about $2 um, a roll, and you get like... A life's worth of string for that amount. <laughs> These I find the cotton string I found at Ho Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever any store that sells crochet thread basically. You get a really thin crochet thread and that's what that is. The nylon silk string on the other hand is really was really originally designed for oboe reeds because they need some really really strong string to make reeds out of because if you've ever seen an oboist make reeds you'll understand. Um, they pull on their string a lot more than we do. So I've actually found that this string is super good quality, it will never break on you, and it is just gorgeous. So the other difference between these two kinds of thread is that the nylon string, I, I always use duco cement. Duco cement is my go-to um, adhesive for reeds. And um, I not only put it underneath the thread, but also to seal the thread, of course. So with uh, when I was using co all cotton string, the cotton string takes two coats um, to make it smooth. The first coat kind of soaks into the thread because it's cotton, and then uh, it makes it kind of uh, abrasive. So if you're like making reeds and reaming them, it kind of hurts your fingers a little bit. So you have to put on two coats with the cotton thread the cotton thread in order to make sh make sure that doesn't doesn't like hurt your fingers. Um, the nylon thread only takes one coat of duco cement because it doesn't absorb the glue as much and it's super super slick. So both of them look really good and as you can see I'm a super nerd and made a bunch of samples. <laughs> this wasn't for this video, this was a long time ago. Um, back when I uh, did some, when I like gave options for what kind of thread people wanted. I just went through the seasons and said, okay, Christmas, candy canes, and then January, and Hanukkah, and then August, and um, uh, October, Valentine's Day, the summer, 4th of July, uh, Mardi Gras, Mar you know, all the Easter, all those kinds of things. So I just had a lot of fun trying to throw together a bunch of different colors of string. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to wrap with nylon string for one color and how to wrap with cotton string with multiple colors like these guys. So you're going to get a lot of information here. <laughs> the other thing I'll talk about is there are different kinds of glue and sealers you can use. Um, I stick to duco cement because it's light, it's thin, um, it soaks into the thread if you're using cotton, um, which makes it that you can actually see um, what is going on with your wrapping. Uh, with hot glue, I have tried hot glue before, and it's so thick that it fogs up and it kind of leaves your um, wrapping looking a little uh, less defined, which is not really the look that I'm going for. Also, hot glue can leave behind kind of a sticky residue on top. Um, and it looks great on its own if you just want to like wrap your reeds in hot glue. It looks great. Like there are people who wrap their reeds in colored hot glue or glitter hot glue, and it looks awesome. I just don't prefer it myself, especially because I really go for that wrapped look with string. I just love it. I don't know. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your reed blank and you're going to cut down the wires. It's really important to make sure that your wires, your la your third wire especially, is in the right place as well as cut down to the right amount of, of wire. So I always start with the top one and you're going to put your fingers around the wire so that you don't kill the reed and just go ahead and tighten it. Oops. 
And like, I don't tighten it so that it pinches the reed. I just tighten it to the point where it's not going to move. And then I'm going to make my second wire. Make sure it's about seven millimeters away from my first wire and tighten that one too. Same thing. Don't pinch the reed. And then the last wire is most important for the wrapping because this is going to be the basis for where we start wrapping our reed. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's about a fourth of an inch to a half of an inch above the end of my reed. I kind of eyeball it at this point. But basically what I'm looking for is I want a little bit of room left at the very bottom of the reed when I actually wrap the reed. After I'm done wrapping, I want to see a little bit of the edge because if you wrap it too far close to the edge, it'll fall off. It has more of a, a tendency to fall off the reed, um, if you, especially if you push it down and all that. So now comes the fun part. First, I'm gonna fold the, I'm gonna cut these wires down to size. I have these special Rieger pliers that have an indent right here, and then this side is flush. So I usually use the indent to my full ability to go ahead and like put it against the reed and then cut and it's the perfect amount of, of wire for what I want to fold down. Now for the third wire, you're going to want to look at the little twists in the wire. See how many twists there are? We're going to go about one and a half twists away from the reed. This is the dangerous part because if you clip too close, the wires will come apart. If you clip too far, you're going to see the wire poking out of your wrapping. So you want to make sure that you're only using about one and a half turns. So that's when I put my, my pliers on the wire and then I rotate the reed around a little bit to find the perfect place. That looks great. Look at that. All right. So now to get the wire off, you always want to take the wire off the mandrel before you uh, go ahead and wrap it. This is because if you wrap it and then you get it all done and then you try and get it off again, you can't because you have to use this part once all of this is already um, glued and everything. So use the middle of the reed to get the, the reed off and then gently place it back on so that you have some way of getting it off the mandrel after you wrap it because when you wrap it, it will tighten this bottom part up. All right, let's start wrapping. So basically, first thing I do, no matter what kind of string I'm using, is I coat the, uh, the outside of the reed with duco cement. Now I'm staying away from the second wire as much as possible because I wanna make sure that I can move that later. I'm going all the way down to the end of the reed so that I seal off all those cracks down there and I'm paying special attention to the cracks down the side just to make sure everything seals. This also prevents your um, third wire from slipping off if you've ever had that happen to you with a reed where the actual bulb of the string slips off. So first thing before I even start wrapping I am going to actually unwrap my entire string because I want to make sure that I'm not pulling on it like this. There you can also use a, um, a reed drying rack and just put this spool on the rack and it actually works really well to kind of unfurl the thread. Now before the glue dries, I'm going to place the, the thread right straight across 45 degree angle with the wire. And I'm going to place it right next to that wire we just cut. So I hold it down with my thumb, like so it's like right there, so it's going to get covered up by other threads and then I'm going to wrap it once clear around the reed like that. Then I'm going to cross over on the other side of on the other side of the cut wire that we cut and cross over the the string so that I can like kind of keep it in place. Now I'm going to start rotating the reed around and when I get 180 degrees from the other side where I just crossed the wire, the, the string across the wire, I'm going to cross it again, up this time. Then I'm going to wait until after my last cross and cross it again, a couple millimeters later. See that? All right. Then I'm going to cross it again after my last cross, cross it again after my last cross. 
these beginning steps are really important to, to get the bulb of the reed right. If you've ever tried to do this and gotten an uneven bulb, it's probably because one side you used too many strokes too early. So like if you if you aren't even with the way that you're distributing the, the string on the wire, you'll most likely get an uneven bulb. So literally all I'm doing is looking for the last stroke that I made, and some of this color changing wire helps with that. Trying to find the last one that you did. That's why I like the color changing string. Not only is it gorgeous, it's just, and it's fun, but it also helps you find the last place that you crossed over. Because sometimes, like, with the same color string, you'll get lost. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just crossing over. Now here's a special spot. We've gotten back to the wire that we cut in the beginning. Sometimes it doesn't line up that the space between the two strings is gonna be perfect, but right now, it's actually looking good. So I'm just gonna go right around the wire. I would not cross over the wire until, it, the, the, until the wrap actually reaches that height. So maybe one more time around. How big your, your uh, bulb ends up being is totally up to you. I usually make mine pretty big because I try and make it big enough so that I can hold it when I'm um, actually scraping the reed later. But then I also want it I also, I also want it to be a certain color. So like with this color changing wire, I, like, I wouldn't stop here because not only is the wire still sticking out, but also the colors are just not where I want them to be. So what I'm looking for is I'm like trying to see if I can get it back to a couple different shades of red or even that yellow fire to be layered on. So this is the point where my wire is almost completely covered by the string. So at this point, I would actually cross directly over the wire if I can. Right now it doesn't look like I can, but I tried. I used to press down on the wire to get it to hide underneath the bulb and then I realized that it just, you know, it's just easier to just go right over. So when you can, go right over it. So I'm getting the yellow now, look at that. It's not quite big enough for my liking. I like to have this almost completely covered with about two or three millimeters left at the bottom. So we're gonna keep going for a while. And now I am officially crossing over the wire. So we're covering it up. This could be a stopping point if you want it to be. It doesn't have to be though. I like to go a little bit further. So the key to getting a really solid wrap is just making sure that the, the space between each cross that you do is equal. Now the other thing that can happen is this side might not be directly opposite of the other, which means that your wrapping starts to get a little close and it starts to get a little hard to cross over and keep the string there. So in that case, I would recommend either restarting at this point or going a little farther over than normal to try and make up that loss. Because sometimes the spacing isn't accurately done and that's, oh, and that happens sometimes. Sometimes if you're, you know, if you're not paying attention, it'll just burst like that and just gently go back and redo it. I know that's a frustrating part. The only thing about this nylon string that's a downside is that it can, it is soft and it doesn't have much traction against itself. <laughs> so you have to be really careful in how much pressure you're putting on the actual string because it could just burst like that, like it just did. It doesn't happen very often, but I'm glad that it happened in the video so that you could see how to remedy that. Alright, we're getting there. I think this one's almost done. I can still see the wire just a little bit, so I'm going to go one more revolution 
to try and cover that up. Perfect. And I got some of the dark string in there. Now, now that I'm done with my wrapping, I want to make sure that I wrap it all the way to the top. So at this point, I'm going to go straight on to this part. And now this part, you're probably going to have to push it down with your fingernail a little bit just to make sure that it stays really flush against itself. And then I usually stop around here, about two millimeters away from the second wire. Go ahead and cut the string to a couple inches, like that. Wrap it around your finger and the reed, and then pass it through and pull the string. Now with nylon string, this wrapping system doesn't really work super well. I'm sure one of you would probably be able to tell me a better way to tie a knot around this reed. But basically you want to glue it almost immediately after wrapping. So what I'm going to do, I've gotten it tight enough that it's not going to move. And so now I'm going to cut the string really close, as close as I can get. And then I'm going to glue it. Now sometimes this happens where it looks kind of uneven the wrapping so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fingernail and kind of push the strings back into place it's kind of how I get it to look so perfect <laughs> I'm a kind of a perfectionist when it comes to these geometric shapes and stuff like that so making sure that they all look super perfect that looks better all right so now we go ahead and glue and I'm not going to show you that part because it's not really as important as the wrapping. You all know how to glue. But this Juco cement will take one coat to cover that whole thing. And then usually after I'm done gluing and it's dried a little bit, I'll use my pliers to press down that little tail that comes up there. And that's it for nylon thread. Now I'm going to show you how to do multiple colors with cotton thread. I kind of figured this out on my own um, trying to... Uh, trying to like create different color schemes and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just had a lot of fun with it, so I decided to try it. And I figured it out pretty well. So, make sure this is tight enough. Cut that to one and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my white thread and use purple and blue on top of it. So... What you can do with multiple colors is you can choose two colors and just wrap with them exactly the way we just did. Or you can take one color and create a base and then use the other two colors to go on top of it. So what you want to do when you use multiple colors like this is you're going to want to unravel them just a little bit so that they're ready to go so you don't have to be fussing with them l later on. Alright. So again, I'm going to start with my Duco cement coating the entire reed, well, the entire bottom of the reed, up to the second wire, but not touching it. This one has a little more of a, of a um, gap between the two sides. Not like an actual gap, but like there, you can see the, um, the cross between the two sides better. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, not touching the mandrel, of course, that would cause problems. Alright, and so I'm going to start with the white string and start the exact same way I did before, 45 degree angle, wrap around once, and then go across the wire. Oh, hair from my dog. Alright, and then go ahead and 180 degrees cross, 180 degrees cross. Don't worry about that tail for now, we'll get it eventually. 180 degrees cross, cross. Now, if you go too high and too low with the thread up on the reed, that will also create a really flat bulb, which um, doesn't look super awesome. So trying to keep the, the string as close to the wire as possible when you're wrapping. Also, sometimes you'll see like this side looks a little farther over, like if I'm equating these two sides to, to each other. This is like the last fourth of this side on the right. And over here, this is the last fourth. So those those aren't equal, So that's but that's okay in the beginning stages just to make sure that your bulb eventually is equal. 
So now I'm crossing over um, the part where the, where the reed meets itself, and then I'm going to cross over in the exact same place on the opposite side. If that gives you a better idea of how to cross and where. Alright, so now I'm just going to do this a little quicker so that we get through the white part so that we can get to the colors. It's going to look messy at first and it's going to look a little icky, but as you keep going, you can get even more refined with it. And it'll kind of cover up those under parts where you can see the wire and you can see the cane. Eventually you'll layer it on so much that you won't even be able to see those little windows behind the thread. Alright, so for the double colors, I don't wrap the reed all the way because I don't want it to be too crazy humongous. So when I stop wrapping, I'm going to go like, like you can still see the wire sticking out there. So I'm going to stop right there. That looks good to me. Uh, maybe I'll go a little more. Just to cover up the wire that's sticking out. Yeah, I think I'll do that. It's an artistic process going on here. <laughs> Alright, the wire looks a little long. I think that's what I did. That's okay though. Let's cover up that wire. That now. Good. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop on top. That's important because I'm going to layer on the two colors now. So what you do is you take both ends of the string, line them up. See, this is why you need to prep before because <laughs> you don't have many hands to work with. So you're going to place those two colors underneath the string that you just put up like with a couple inches like a couple you know about an inch of a tail now what I do to keep this method I'm gonna cut the white white string about a couple like probably 10 inches just to create some excess for myself and then I'm gonna wrap it up the reed past the part where I need for the colored string I'm gonna wrap it around the first wire wrap it under the second wire I'm going to do that a few times so that this, this string stays out of the way. I don't want that in the way at all. I'm just going to deal with the two colors right now. So, as you can see, the two colors are wedged underneath that, string, that white string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with where I was, where I left off with the white wire, so that it doesn't overlap things that I already did. I'm going to find that last strand of the white wire, or this white string, sorry. And then I'm going to kind of place the two strings between my fingers where at the length that I want them to be apart. And I'm going to go ahead and do that, cross them, and then I'm going to switch. So I just switch the, the, the colors so that they're opposite, so that they alternate. So then I'm going to switch them again, alternate, switch them again, alternate, switch them again. And these ones I probably only need probably three or four passes because I want to make sure that they end up on top and I don't want to overlap them so much that it looks chaotic. I just want it to be an accent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel the white, the white string again at this point. And I'm going to combine it with the two colors that I just used. So what I try to do is I actually use the two colors on top and then I put the white, white, the white string on the bottom so that it kind of like overlaps those again. You see that? So then I'm going to put all three of these really flush together and then wrap around the excess that I had because I don't want to lose the what I've the work that I've just done. All right, I'm pushing those strings down as much as I can. Now again, because there's three um, different strings wrapping around, I only had to wrap twice. 
to get it to where I want it to be, but below the second wire. Now I'm going to take that white string once again and overlap it with the two colors. And then, since it's already cut, I'm going to wrap it around my finger like we did with the last one and tie it off. Now, you can see it's really close to the first, the second wire, so I'm just going to use my fingernails to push that string down a little more. Cotton, white, cotton string, like I said earlier, is um, it's actually a lot more pliable than the nylon string. So, like, even though it's it looks the same, it you, if you press down on the bulb at all, or if you move the strings, as you can see, they're really really easy to move around. So, after that we are going to cut, clip those tails that we created with the two colors from the, from the beginning of wrapping and then we're going to clip the tails of the white and the colored string that we created when we tied it. Perfect! Now, last thing before we glue it, I'm going to make sure that all of these are perfectly divide it up so that they all look great. This side is a problem. So we're going to move those strings around, get them to be in line with each other so that they look equal. It's a purple one. Sometimes they don't want to move where you want them to, so you have to figure that out on both ends. Whoop. Get back there. I'm going to go this way with everything since they're not cooperating. Alright, so there we are. We have two colors on top of white. Read. After that, I would again use two coats of Duco cement on this cotton thread because it soaks up the first, uh, it soaks up the first uh, coat. So you'd want to do two different coats. And these little guys right here, these little puffs, will not be as much of a problem once you actually glue it because they'll kind of disappear. So not as not as much of a problem. This one is really close to the second wire. So just make sure that once you glue it that you like kind of move that second wire around a little bit to try and get it to be free from the glue um, if that ever happens. All right, and as you can see with both of these wrapped reeds. They look pretty similar. This one looks a little more defined because it is nylon thread. This one's a little fuzzier, but once it's glued it'll look pretty much like this one. And they both have a good amount of the end showing to make sure that, you know, I just like to have a little bit of the end showing because I've had such problems when I was growing up using reeds that I bought having that turban fall off from age or wear or whatever it was. Um, but that glue underneath the string will hopefully keep that from happening. So, Alright, well thanks for watching!